without me. I don't know about you, but I don't want him to do it without me. Hallelujah. Praise him. It's so good to see you all on this morning. Thank you for the young people. Thank you, praise team. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I thank God for your spirit. Amen. I'm tripping, man. If at first I thought it was a tailgate party, but then I see the the giants and the bills. So I thought it was. It just got on blue. See, they, amen. They crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Man, I'm just glad that God is in the building. Hallelujah. We're gonna we're gonna have us a good time. I'm gonna read from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 11 through 17, the King James Version. Old school to be proud of me from reading from the King James. I did it for old school. I, I didn't want to do it without you. And I know if, if you don't do King James, they feel like you're doing it without them. <laughs> Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 17. And it reads, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he said, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered and said, Thou hypocrite, doth each, not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Lord, I ask for you to bring a word for your people right now. Please bring a word. Allow me not to try to imitate or duplicate that which happened at 8 a.m., but allow the authenticness of your praise, of your word, to be released in this moment. We ask for your power and grace to pierce our hearts and make it good ground, not thorny ground, nor scorched ground, nor shallow ground. Allow it to fall on the hearts of good ground, ground which is ready to hear and receive your word. We ask for your power to embody me. We ask your Holy Ghost to be magnified so that they may hear what thus say you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And it is almost the way it happened. I almost wanted to change the title because, uh, I mean, the way it just moved and the organic thing that happened, we ended up, it's, uh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Uh, but I want to uh, stay consistent with what God has given me. So I want you to let your neighbor know you can't have my praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell Satan, tell Satan one time, you can't have my praise. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care what you're going through. Tell the devil you can't have my praise. 
I might have got a bad letter from the doctor, but you can't have my praise. Oh, Lord, anyway, attitudes affect the way we live our lives. A good attitude can bring success. A poor attitude can bring destruction. An attitude results from perspective. I'm sure you understand what perspective is. Everyone seems to have different perspectives. It comes from the way we look at life, and the way we look at life often is determined by our history. The events of our past can cause us to have an outlook or perspective on life that is less than God's perspective. Um, you can be hurt by someone and, and cope with pain by not trusting people. This attitude of defensiveness may follow you well into your adult years. If we have protected ourselves a certain way in the past with some measures of success, then it is natural to continue that pattern throughout life. However, we must learn how to look past our painful perspective and change our attitudes. This woman was made completely healed by his touch. She couldn't keep help herself no matter how hard she tried, but Jesus unleashed her. He lifted her burdens and set her free. It is, it, it, is, it is God's intention that we be set free from all encumbrances in life because we are not as effective when we function while carrying heavy loads. Some of us are, are codependent and are caught up in codependent relationships. Some of us have been in the same mess for so long we don't even know we have a problem. Some of us have become so accustomed to having a problem that even when we get a chance to be delivered, we find it hard to let go. This is why I love Jesus. He took away the woman's excuse. He said, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. The moment he had said that, it required something of her she hadn't had to deal with before. For 18 years, she hadn't had to deal with this because she was handicapped. The moment he told her her problem was gone, she had no more excuses. Before you get out of trouble, you need to straighten out your attitude. Until your attitude is corrected, your trouble can't be corrected. See, Christ wants to separate you from the source of your bitterness until it no longer gives you the kind of attitude that makes you a carrier of pain. Your attitude affect, affects your situation, your attitude, not other people's attitude about you. Your attitude will give you life or death. Once uh, One of the greatest deliverances people have, will ever experience is deliverance from their own attitude. See, see, when God comes to heal, he wants to heal your emotions also. Sometimes all we pray about is our situation. We bring God our shopping list of desires and, and fixing circumstances is not the answer. Healing attitudes set people free. Uh, see, 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 your circumstances are illusions made by the devil because those things that are seen are temporal, but those things that are not seen are everlasting. See, see, your faith would change your circumstances. Your attitude would change your circumstances. As a woman of man thinks, so is he or she. When you think positive, then you get positive. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, when I say something that I want, I expect to get it. When I say I'm going to get something for free and you say something, about it that doesn't line up with what I say, you know what I do? Click. Uh, I got to get off the phone. I may do it a little slick. Like I might say, you know what? Somebody calling me. You know what? You know what? I, I got another call on the other line. You, 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 I, my mama won't me. So, so I heard somebody call my name. I, I got to get away from you because I can't listen to negativity. I only can hear what thus saith the Lord. So when God tell me I'm going to get something, if you don't believe I'm going to get something, you got to talk to my hand and not my ear. Oh, you don't hear me. Uh, let me stop getting ahead of myself. I'm too old to be shouting loud and quick. See, the woman who was crippled for 18 years was delivered from her infirmity. The Bible says that she was made straight and glorified God. She got a new attitude. However, the enemy still tried to defeat her by using the people around her. Satan does not want you to find health and strength. He may send another circumstance that will pull you down the same way that if you do not change your attitude. You have to allow Jesus to touch your life in areas you try to hide from everybody else. Everybody. 
Uh, you have to let Jesus touch you by confessing your sins to him. The Bible said that when he laid his hands on her, she was made straight. That's physical deliverance. Then her attitude changed. She entered into a posture of praise and thanksgiving and worshiped the Lord. The woman began to leap and rejoice and magnify God and shout the victory like anybody who has been delivered for 18 years of infirmity should. While she was glorifying God over here, the enemy was stirring up strife over there. The high official was upset that she was healed on the Sabbath. You know the enemy will send some people around you to try to discredit how you get blessed or delivered because they are jealous, because they steal in bondage. Don't worry about how I got delivered. Worry about your own life. You can't let you can't get mad. You can't let people distract you that get mad because you got delivered another way. They tried to tell Paul that you don't know Jesus. And Paul said, I might not have walked with him with y'all. I might might not have had wine with you, but in the spirit, I saw him on the road to Damascus, and I know I had a way. Oh, yeah. I might have caught him in the backside of the club, dropping it like it was hot. Maybe God touched me in the midst. Maybe I caught the spirit after I smoked my last crack rock, and God has brought me a mighty, mighty long way. So what? He saw me in the bar, and I got delivered. Because I didn't get delivered in church, because I didn't get delivered at the altar, God could have talk to me. If y'all don't hear me right now, God could have talked to you wherever you be. It don't matter where God talked to you at. So what you got saved in the club? Just bring your little smoke out self up here to the altar so God can deliver you all the way. So what you got delivered when you got beat down by your pimp walking on the street with your heels on, trying to make some money laying on your back. So what you got delivered like that? At least you saw him somewhere. Oh, I'm tired of these uppity Christians always trying to make people feel bad about how they got delivered. I don't care how you got delivered. I don't care why you got delivered. All I can do is shout and say hallelujah that you found him wherever you found him. Oh, it coming out way different than 8 o'clock. Somebody done got delivered at the bar. Somebody done got delivered on the street. Somebody done, oh, it don't matter where you got delivered from. Just shout that God brought you out. Ooh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody got delivered in a strange place and you ashamed of where God saw you at, you better start giving your testimony because somebody else might get delivered the same way you got delivered. You ain't got to get delivered in church. You need to not forsake the assembly of yourselves together, but you can get delivered anywhere. Oh, I don't know where to shout. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but God done went somewhere else in this church. I don't know. Ooh but can I tell you what she didn't do? When they were talking about her over here, she didn't listen to them. She kept on praising God. You got to tell people, talk to the hand. I ain't got time to listen to you. I got a devil to fight. I ain't got time to be in no cat fight, no dog fight. I got a purpose that only I can fulfill that God has need of me. I was called for a time such as this, and I ain't got time for your uppity judgmental self. <laughs> Jesus, don't you worry about your neighbor talking about you make too much noise. They don't know the hell you have been through. They don't know what you done came out of. Don't matter how much noise I make. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care if my team is sorry. I don't care if they never win a game a day in my life. But I know one thing. I'm going to shout and give God my praise because I know he brought me a mighty long way. Oh, yeah. You ain't got time to discuss this stuff with them hating folk. Nobody hate on nobody that they don't want to be. 
If you hate on me, you want to be me. I know they had to move a single white female, but there's some single black females out there. There's some single black Negroes out there. You better watch out because somebody want to be you. That's why they talking about you. If they didn't want to be you, they wouldn't be talking about you. And you sit up there feeling bad because they talking about you. They talking about you because they feel like you better than them. You better stop worrying about what people say. Oh, Lord, I know I read the King James, but we're going to act like we in the NIV in the New Revised Standard Version today. We ain't going to be sitting there acting like we all good. You can't have my praise. My hallelujah belongs to my God, and I don't care what hell I'm going through. I'm going to shout right now because my deliverance is around the corner. My God has stepped on the sheep. Cheetahs. I, I know I gotta use eight o'clock because eleven o'clock gonna be downright ignorant. I ain't trying to act like I got no degree. I don't care about my doctor degree. I just know that somebody going through something, and you better learn how to praise. My pastor wrote a book. Praise the hell out of yourself. Praise the hell out of yourself. Praise the infirmity out of yourself. Pray the sickness out of yourself. Pray the disease out of yourself. Pray the depression out of yourself. He said, I give you a garment of praise for your heaviness. I don't even care what I wrote down. I got a good one for the broadcast. It was all technical and it was it was very theologically sound, but I ain't here to be theologically sound right now. It's somebody out there going through hell and you better learn how to praise him right now. You better learn how to shout and deliver yourself. Ooh, Jesus. The Lord is your defense. Stop trying to defend yourself. You better ask Nehemiah when Sambalat, Tobias, and Geshem came and said, look here, we got some drama for you. He said, talk to the hand. I ain't got time to come down there and talk to you with your foolishness. I got a wall to build. Got time to deal with you. You know your enemy can't stop you. You just keep allowing them to distract you. See, you want to answer every text. It's this great piece of technology that I found that's on my phone called Block. Yes, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's even on Twitter. I found that it is even on Snapchat. It's on TikTok. Ain't it funny how the world got most sense than us? They put buttons to learn to teach us how to block folk and stop talking to them. Why did I discover this on Twitter? Why did I discover this on Instagram? Why did I just discover this in my life? When you keep bringing me drama, I'm just going to. I'm just going to block you. I ain't got time to keep talking to you because I got to guard my ear gate and my eye gate. And because I'm listening to you just so I can give you a rebuttal, I'm letting your mess contaminate me because I shouldn't listen no way. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start making my own little move. Remember back in the age of the day? Ooh. Give my hallelujah to God. I ain't going to worry about talking to you. This is my new move when you talk to your uh. Praise him. I'm going to give him a praise and I'm going to ignore you because it must be a breakthrough coming around the corner because the devil sees all his minions. Yeah. Remember Mark chapter 9, nine with the boy with the epileptic seizures? When Jesus stepped on the scene, that's when he started going into convulsions. When the devil know you're about to be delivered, that's when he throw all the stuff at you. You going through some mess right now because your breakthrough is around the corner. And if you don't give him your praise, don't you let the devil have your praise. Your hallelujah belongs to your God. Don't you let them take your praise. Your praise belongs to the God of most high. Stop giving him your, come on somebody. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. You, 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 you got to give him. You, you stop becoming defensive. When you have been through difficult times, you cannot afford to play around with moods and attitudes. Depression and defensiveness may make you vulnerable to the devil again. You got to praise him. See, this woman had to protect herself by entering into a defensive posture of praise. 
See, this was not just praise of thanksgiving, but defensive praise. <laughs> defensive praise is a strategy and posture of war that says we may, we will not allow our attitude to crumble and fail and fall. When you get to the point that you quit defending yourself or attacking others, you open up the door for the Lord to fight your fight. When this woman began to bless God, she built walls around her own deliverance. She decided to keep the kind of attitude that enabled the deliverance of God to be maintained in her life. See, see, when you're in trouble, God will reach and bring you out your mess. The problem is you need to learn how to stay out of it. When you can live, you want to go back and tell everybody what you know. Remember when Jacob, when, when Joseph got thrown in jail because the wife lied on him and later on he got pulled back up and went to second in command again? He didn't go back and try to tell everybody what happened and he didn't do this. I don't care what you think about me. What you think about me is no consequence to me. What you think about me doesn't change who I am. See, the problem with y'all, you trying to convince people how powerful you are when they already know anyhow. They just trying to get on your nerves enough to keep you to distracted. They already know you fearfully and wonderfully made. The demon in them is the reason why they're attacking you because darkness hates light. Your light is destroying the darkness that's in them. It's not the person in the next cubicle messing with you. It's the devil inside of them. Yeah. Because the devil knows how powerful your spirit is and if they know, if, if they befriend you, they will be delivered. Now, you don't have to be their friend, but you got to love them and treat them nice. Get that to work early. Put some oil under their chair, not on it, because they're going to know you put some on it. Put under their chair. Put some oil on that, on that doorpost and say in the name of Jesus, I'm going to deliver them. Come on, somebody. You got to learn how to pray for your enemies because if you pet it, the Bible says, when you pray for them, it's like pouring hot coals on their head. That's what Romans tells you. If you pray for your enemy, it's like pouring hot coals on their head. Either they'll get burned and be delivered or burnt up by God. I ain't got time to argue with you. Ooh, I felt the power spilling come out. I felt pliers coming on there, man. You want to argue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See? See, see, he, see, see, she, when they criticized her, she didn't even talk to them. She just kept praising God. She's like, I've been, I've been messed up for 18 years. I ain't got time to be dealing with you. Mm -mm -mm. Look here. When you have had problems for many years, you tend to expect problems. See, God must have healed that woman's attitude because she didn't even try to go back and listen to them negative folk. When you've been disappointed for so long, sometimes you feel like you're going to keep having disappointments. See, see, you know what? I don't talk to people that don't expect certain stuff. Because if you don't expect certain things, why should I keep talking to you? Because you're going to contaminate what I think. I, I, I told, I, I had a meeting. I was talking to my staff, and I told them, I said, hey, hey, the, the, um, 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 the city going to give us something for free. I know they're going to do this for free because I ain't going to think about it because I don't want to pay for it, and I know the city going to do it. And they, they learn how to just say amen whether they believe it or not. <laughs> and, 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 and the city going to do it for free because I want the city to do it for free, and I expect the city to do it for free because we ain't got no money to pay for it. So I said, God, hey, this is your vision, not mine. You said do this, so I need you to make the city do what I need the city to do because if I can't, if I can't pay for it, I ain't going to go rob no bank because I ain't going to jail. Come on, God. I need you to give me some favor. And they began to do what I asked them to do for free. Why? Because of the favor of God. Somebody said, man, you got too much power. I said, I don't have power. I have favor, and favor ain't fair. It don't matter. I don't need no power. All I got to do is know that I'm called for a purpose and I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And he that began a good work in me shall finish it. And that was it. I ain't talking to them no more because I didn't want to hear anything else they had to say because I don't want to take negativity in my ear gate because I want to protect my praise. All I want to do is praise God in the midst of my mess. Praise God in the midst of my need. Praise God in the midst of my celebration. Praise God in the midst of my infirmity. Praise God in the midst of my healing. I want to keep his praise continuously on my lips because when I praise him, the blessings come down. 
Hey, hey, what? Any first time visitors in the house, raise your hand. I wouldn't. Okay, I'm going to act like I got some sense a little bit. Come next Sunday, I'll be far more theologically sound. I'll make sure that I sound good and I sound very dignified. Uh, I'll start off like Joe Olsen at least six minutes, and then I'll go, you know. But, but, but just come back next Sunday, because this Sunday ain't the Sunday for me to act like I got some sense, because somebody out here need to learn how to praise God in the midst of their mess. Somebody need to learn how to shout before they get their deliverance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that don't make no sense. So I'm going to be ignorant today because at the end of the day, his thoughts are not my thoughts. His ways are not my ways. And I'm going to use the foolishness of what God, oh, come on, somebody. God will use some ignorant stuff to confound the why. It don't make sense to shout hallelujah when you still sick. It don't make sense to shout before you get the blessing. But that's what God say do. So I'm going to be ignorant. And I'm going to shout before I get my blessing. I'm going to shout before I get my healing. Even when the devil winning, I'm going to still give God my sacrificial praise. Yeah. I'm going to be ignorant today. I'll be smart next week. Can you imagine what would have happened if she started arguing with them? They would have got into a fight. She would have lost her healing. So many of us lose our blessing because of our loose lips. We always got a rebuttal. But the minute, you, the only way you can rebuttal if you do what? Listen. And faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So destruction can come by me hearing some mess I don't need to hear. And some of us hear mess more than we hear the word because we don't say the word enough and we keep listening to the myth just so we can argue back. You know what I do? I'm going to tell you because I'm still kind of petty. I ain't been delivered all the way. So what I do is this. When I want to get rid of people, I sit down and write a long email. If I write you a long email, don't reply because that means I ain't studying you no more. If I send you a long text, you get on my nerves. You're getting close to me being tired of you. If I send you a long voice message, I still like you, but I'm tired. If I sit down at my computer and write an email, I'm done. Because what I know is I don't want to hear nothing else you got to say because it's going to be cantankerous and toxic. So I sit down and write an email, cover everything I need to cover, and I'm done. You reply, I don't know what you said. I'm going to learn how to just cut you off and not send an email, but the pettiness in me is still strong. Hallelujah, help me. You're right. Help me. <laughs> Believe in that petty spirit. God, shut that in my mouth. It's still there, though. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But you got to learn how to cut folk off. And you got to learn when folk want to walk away from you, let them step. You, you, come on, I, all you got to do is watch about three, four episodes of Martin. And if somebody say they want to step, you say, well, get to stepping. Step out of my life. I don't need you. All I need is God. God will bring you back. In fact, you can call Tyrone. I'm going to put my pettiness down and I'm going to let you use my phone. I ain't going to be like Erica. I'm going to let you use my phone, call Tyrone, and get to stepping out my life because I need positivity and not negativity. wants to speak a word of faith to you. He wants to set you free from every power that has kept you in bondage. In order for that to be received in your spirit, you must allow him to come in and instill faith. The emotional walls that surround us have to come down. The church has become so narrow in its approach to attitude. We want to keep our attitudes to ourselves and simply take them to God. Although we certainly should take them to God, we also need to bear one another's burdens. Now, you can't take it. Your burden is to everybody. You want me to tell you how, what I do? I test folk. I give them something. I don't care that they know or even a lie. And if they come back to me, I ain't giving you my burdens. You's a gossiper. 
You got you to gotta put people to the test. You can't just talk to people. And you, you keep talking to people that don't like you and you continue to make alliances with them and they keep giving you negative stuff. I can't hang around you because how can two walk together unless they agree? And if you agree to my destruction and I keep walking with you, apparently I want to be destructed on. I'm just trying to help somebody. <clears throat> See? We are not valuable because we love God. We are valuable because he loves us. Jesus took away her ability to make excuses for herself and gave her the strength to maintain an attitude of gratitude and a posture of praise. The church today, it, 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 it should be a safe heaven the same, the same way. Those who are wounded should be able to come and find strength in our praise. Gratitude and defense of praise are contagious. Once Jesus addressed the naysayers, the others who saw what he had done, that they and he healed the infirm woman, they began to rejoice in verse 17. That's why you can't worry about your neighbor looking at you crazy when you praise him for real. Now, when you praise him for faith, I can tell. Your neighbor can tell. But when you praise him God for real, you can't worry about who beside you. You got to praise him because it's contagious because somebody in there going through something and they need to catch a vibe from you. When you come, come on somebody, and you know it's some nosy folk in church because some of y'all praising God and they know you going through hell. They know your business because some of them started the business in your life. And so when they see you praising God, how in the world she keep praising him even though all this stuff going on in her life? Then that begin to catch them and they begin to say, you know what? It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about the God, whoever she worshiping. They'll catch a vibe. Those who missed the blessing were those who kept fussing and arguing about religion because they said you shouldn't get healed on the Sabbath day. Why I can't get healed on the Sabbath day? Why I couldn't get delivered? Yeah, my testimony don't sound as good as yours, but I got delivered at a bar. I got so drunk and said, God, if you get me home this time, and I meant it this time, because I didn't say it so many times, but this time I said, get me home this time, and I was really real that I was going to get to know God. Who cares how you came to Christ as long as you came? The Bible describes heaven in Luke 15, 10, that when one person, one sinner comes, the church and the angels rejoice. Why is it when one person comes down? We didn't have seven, eight people come at the same time, and we just looking at them. Y'all should be shouting because somebody has been snatched out of the darkness and brought into the marvelous light. We should almost embarrass folk when they come down here. We should be clapping so loud. Christ unleashed power in the infirm woman that day. He healed her body and gave her the strength of character to keep an attitude of praise. You'll receive the same power if you take your wounds to Jesus. I'm not saying he ain't going to send you somewhere else, but you need to learn how to take them to him first. Take them to him before you take them to your mama. Take them to him before you take it to your deacon. Take, take your wounds to him before you take it to, to your cousin them. And he'll show you who you need to take your wounds to if you need to take it to somebody other than him. Y'all don't want to hear me. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29, old school King James Version, yet again. For ye see your calling, brethren, <clears throat> how not many wise men are after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to nullify things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God doesn't seek <clears throat> to manifest his glory and glorious works through those whom the world perceives as great and wonderful. He boldly declares without out apology and appreh or apprehension that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. When people seek individuals to do great and monumental things, they look for those who have great education, wealth, prestige, and honor. We seek people of great nobility. God select those who are not so noble. He chooses those whom the world has rejected, those who have been ostracized and alienated from their family, friends, and peers, those who are constantly criticized. God takes them and infuses them with his power, revelation, and wisdom so that they will be wondrously educated in the things 
things of God. This occurs so they can greatly change and affect the things of the world. God don't care nothing about your education. He don't care nothing about my doctor degree. He don't care nothing about my master divinity. I had to go to school because he said study to show thyself approved, but that's to show thyself approved to Negroes like you. I had to go to school so I could show you that I knew something, but God had already anointed me to preach the gospel before I was even born. God has already gifted you. You don't need no education to do what God has already called you to do. You are already gifted. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop trying to prove stuff to people that ain't gonna never be impressed by you. No way. God has touched you. God has made you to do something nobody else can do but you. God considers those who who are of no account. Those nobody expects to be anything. Those whose family, friends, and relatives have thrown them away and given up on. God takes those who are fearful and don't believe in themselves and make them men and women of valor. Can I tell y'all something? I don't like getting up in front of folk. That's why I get up and joke before I get up here because I got to bring my nerves down. I don't like talking to people. I'm an introvert whether you believe it or not. But at the end of the day, God has anointed me even in the midst of my fear, even in the midst of my scaredness, even in the midst of me not being qualified to talk in front of a large crowd because of the nervousness I have. But at the end of the day, baby, when God anoints and appoints you, it don't matter how ungifted you are, it don't matter how uneducated you are, when God has his hands on you. Yeah. Why does God do this? Why does God choose the rejected and the outcast? Because he don't want anybody to steal his glory. When people say, oh, Lord, you preach, I know it ain't nothing but God because I be so scared. That's why I be sweating all the time. But at the end of the day, when the anointing falls on me, God takes over. He takes the mic and Maxwell sits down and chills and let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost does. If you just sit back and let God be the pilot of your life. If you got a bumper sticker that say God is the co-pilot, tear it up and burn your car. Because at the end of the day, if God ain't your pilot, you gonna crash. God, my co-pilot. You don't even know how to fly a plane. He said, nobody, he don't want no flesh. He don't want nobody to get his glory. Second Corinthians 4, 7 said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of, of God and not us. He letting us know you made out of dirt for a reason. He's saying a dirt bag can be anointed. The reason why God was born in a manger, a food trough. I know we make it look like it was a little cradle, but no, it was a food trough. It was what the cows and the pigs and the horses ate out of. It was what the sheep and all them grazed and ate out of. It was nothing but a, a something what slop went in. Stuff ain't nothing but stuff you didn't want to eat. If they, if you would never eat out of a manger, I would tell you that right now. If you really know what a manger is and went and smelled what a manger sits and saw what ate out of a manger, you'd understand understand that I don't want to be born in a manger. I don't want to eat in a manger. I don't want to sleep where the manger at. But God did all this to show you that even in the midst of dirt, even in the midst of mess up, even in the midst of your weakness and disease and infirmity and weakness, he'll still use you in a mighty, mighty way. Stop letting people put you down. God is choosing you because you messed up. Because when people see how he's using you, he'll know it's nobody but God. Yeah, uh -huh. God said, it ain't you, it's me. God says, when I bring you out, your critics will know it was me. I'm going to wait until you fail. I'm going to wait until you lose confidence in yourself, your education, your job, your influential title, your resumes, your friends, your family, your doctrines, your creed, and whatever else your faith may be in. When you have lost hope in everything earthly and feel totally worthless and are in complete despair, then I'm going to stretch out for my right hand. I'm going to pick you up. Out, I'm going to pick you off your feet and take your feet out the miry clay. I'm going to place you on the rock to stay when nobody else will praise me. Praise will continually be in your mouth because you are going to know that it was my right hand, my holy arm that brought you to your victory. It was I who brought you out. It was I who gave you the breakthrough and not yourself nor the help of any man. Do you still wonder? Why you got to go through all the pain and hell you going through and experiencing right now? You're going through it 
because he wants you to be humble. Huh? He wants you to be humble. And humble don't necessarily mean you walking around here weak. Humble means you totally submitted to God and you trust him totally. And when God allows you to go through some hell and you still come out on top, you begin to understand that it was nothing but God. It was him in the jail cell. It was him when I got a divorce. It was him when I had the lump on my breast. It was him when I had the prostate cancer. It was him when I had the infirmity. It was him when I had the disease. It was him when my child went to jail. It was him when I lost my job. It was him when I had COVID. He was with me all day time when other people left me God was still right there with me even though I went through the water they didn't overtake me and when I walked through the fire I was not burned because my God is an ever present help and no weapon formed against me shall prosper and he that began a good work in me shall finish it <laughs> the reason you will no longer place confidence in the flesh uh huh. For it was God who works in you <laughs> to do his good will and pleasure. But in all things, we must give him praise, not man, <laughs> that no flesh should glory in his presence. As I close, I have got to specifically talk about the woman's condition because Luke, being a physician, would say, I did not do the text just so that God inspired him to write if I didn't talk about her infirmity. That's what Luke said. The text states that she had a curvature of the spine. This sounds like some form of arthritis where the joints of the spine fuse together. Luke, the physician, gives the medical description of his day for the disease. She had been deformed for 18 years. Two facts need to be noted. Fact number one, she had been afflicted with a spirit of infirmity. Jesus said the spirit was an evil spirit of infirmity. She was a daughter whom Satan had bound. Thus, the woman needed spiritual healing as well as physical healing. All right? Number two, she was in worship despite her deformity. And note, her deformity was severe. She was bent all over and unable to rise up. The pain was sometimes severe, yet her habit was to attend worship and seek the favor and help of God upon her life. She went to church even though she couldn't hardly walk. In fact, she was walking upside down. Her head was between her legs, so she saw everything backwards and upside down. And when it rained, y'all don't come. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Oh, it's raining. I'm going to look online. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Bedside Baptist today, girl. It's raining. <clears throat> girl, I took out my hat, did. <clears throat> girl, you know that's a wig. Just take it off. <laughs> Put on a do-rag call today. <clears throat> the woman's faithful. The woman's faithfulness in worship to God, despite deformity and pain, attracted Jesus. He knew both her condition with all its pain and inconvenience and the great sacrifice she made to worship God. He was moved with compassion. No, she did not have to call him for help. He called her to him. Oh, come on, somebody. The woman for 18 years was bent over backwards, which means she saw everything and everybody backwards and upside down. There are some people in here that are seeing things backwards and upside down in both the natural and the spirit because you don't have a posture of praise. Yeah, you can stand up and you can walk straight, but your back and spine and the spirit are deformed and you see everything upside down and, and, and backwards. Some folk always think stuff about them. Everybody thinks, oh, somebody talking about me. Somebody talking about I ain't even thinking about you, girl. What in the world is wrong with you? It's because your spirit is so jacked up because you're not feeding it with the word of God. Oh, girl, you smell good with your Dosi and Gabbana and your Gucci. You smell real good, but your spirit so stink because you ain't never washed it with the word of God except on Sunday morning. I need you to wash your underarms with the word of God to get your life together. I need you to brush your teeth with the word of God to get that stench of bad mouthing and not faith out of your mouth so you can speak life and not death. I need you to wash your chest to make sure your heart feels God and understand that he is the author and finisher of your faith. I I need you to get it together. I need you to wash your loins and man up and woman up and walk with the power God has ordained you to walk in. If you can just give your spirit a bath with the word of God, you won't be walking bent over and upside down. Oh my God. 
God said he would give you a spirit of praise, a garment of praise for your heaviness. He's the author and finisher of your faith. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But you know what? What's going on in your life that blinds you? What goes on in your life that makes you think that God doesn't love you? You know what? It's because you keep concentrating on the horizontal more than you concentrating on the vertical. The horizontal are the naysayers and the folk that talk about you and the people that's always saying you ain't going to make it. You keep listening to them and you think the whole world is against you. Let me tell you something, mama. Let me tell you something, bro. At the end of the day, what you need to understand is that they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, so you need to stop listening to them. Can I talk to you for a minute? There's nothing under the sun that can stop you or destroy you unless you let it get between your ears and your mind. Stop letting people play with your mind. You know what you need to understand? No matter what you're going through, they can't do nothing. Only one person and one thing can get you out of any of the mess when I start asking you these questions. I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'm sure you're going to know the answer and it ain't going to be your friend. It ain't going to be your cousin. It ain't even going to be your mama even though she love you. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh my God, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tell me I'm his own. Can't nothing save me but the blood of Jesus. Can't no gossiper save me. Can't no hater save me. Can't no job save me. Can't no like God, y'all don't hear me. Can't no life insurance policy save me. Nothing can save me from the devil but Jesus. So you know what? He gonna get my praise. He gonna get my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to him. My praise belongs to him. So even though I'm sick, even though I may be dying, my hallelujah belongs to him. My praise belongs to him. Even though I'm on my deathbed, my praise belongs to him. Devil, you can't have my praise. Cancer, you can't have my praise. Disease, you can't have my praise. Jail, you can't have my praise. Divorce, you can't have my praise. Sickness, you can't have my praise. Unemployment, you can't have my praise. Can't nothing have my praise but my Jesus. I'm going to tell God right now, my hallelujah belongs to you. Nobody else when I'm going through hell. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him in the noonday. I'm going to praise him at night. His praise shall continuously be on my lips. I went through a divorce, but Jesus was there. I went through surgery, but Jesus was there. My praises shall always go up when I win, even when I lose. My praise is going to go up regardless of the situation. Can I tell you something? If you really want to fool the devil, if you really want to mess him up, praise him in the midst of your mess. Let me tell you something. The devil can only come to kill, steal, and destroy. I done told the boy he can't create no more demons. So let me tell you when he show up. He shows up in your life right before your breakthrough. When Jesus showed up in Mark chapter 9, then that's when the boy went into convulsions. Because the spirit knew a greater spirit was in the midst. And because it stepped in, he knew it had to go. Can I tell you something? I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a pin in and come back to that. That's why the person in the next cubicle don't like you. That demon in them know that when you walk in there, the light is going to destroy their darkness. Don't you get mad at them. You just say, don't say it out loud, but in your mind, and you say it in your brain, and you talk to that spirit, say, get you behind me, Satan. It ain't that girl that's jealous of you. It's the demon in her. It ain't that dude that's trying to hate on you. It's that demon in him. And when you begin to just speak the word of God in the midst of them, whether you say it out loud to them or not, that demon can hit you in the spirit. And when you in that cubicle, you say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus on this situation. And I... Let me tell you something. I'm being vulnerable like I was at 8 o'clock. Every time, that's why I know it's true to you, Every time I'm about to go to the next level, something happened with my family. Every time. Because the devil can't get me. He's going to get the people around me. 
That's why I got to be careful who I hire. I can't keep around sensitive people that's always whining about stuff. It messes up my spirit. Ugh, make me itch. <laughs> time. Every time I get ready to go to the next level, the devil come. But he never come to me because he know I ain't studying him. He know he can't get me because I don't care. Ain't got no feelings like that. I don't like him. And I know his tactics. But at the end of the day, he, he fooled me so many times with this one. He always attacked my family every time. And I'll start feeling guilty. I need to go back home. I need to find a job over here. Oh, this church said I can come over there. Let me go over here. Let me, let me go back home. And at first, I just didn't like y'all. Y'all was crazy. But now it's, it's God. I'm just keeping it real. So I'm preaching my way. Keep it real. Y'all cool now. So Most of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about because y'all were good the whole time. Them joking back in 2011, they know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, yeah. But every time I get ready to go to the next level, the devil attacks my family. Whew. I, I remember that time I told y'all when we was about to build that other the building, when we was about to come over here in 2018, parents had a horrific accident. God told me, you can't go home. <clears throat> he said, you go home and they're going to do nothing. Stay right here. <clears throat> and it was funny. People would tell me, I ain't go home to see your mama. That's bad. Folk that didn't even know me don't even like me. If I could block their face, I would, but I could. They were talking to me in person. I wanted to just get a black mark and just mark their face out. So I went to be able to read their lips. <laughs> and, and they said, why, why you ain't going home? And I said, because God told me not to. And they kept talking. I just walked off because I couldn't risk listening to them because I already wanted to go home. And I knew that was the message of Satan to get me distracted. Like I said, when I was there, the demons that didn't want us to move over here, they came and showed up. The church hadn't been there in six months, but they showed up that day. And when they saw me, they turned around. I said, oh, I see why I had to be here. But in the house of God, the night before worship, when my dad and was still at the hospital on Saturday night, I was at the church. And like one in the morning, they still was at the hospital. I called my aunt. I said, hey, go tell. I, told, I, know, I know I told you this before, but I said, look, do this, do this, and this. To this day, I can't remember what I said, but she went and did it, and boom. They said, how did you know that? They were like, my nephew, she said, my nephew told me this and this and this, and I knew what to tell you, and that's what I did. They are like, he a doctor? No, he had church praying. They were straight, right? My mama, they said he had a cracked sternum. God said, no, I'll tell them to do it again, test again, it ain't going to be cracked. It wasn't cracked. To this day, mama say, they must have got it wrong the first time, but I know God. I know she know God too. Sorry, mama, I know you listen, but I'm talking about you. <laughs> ain't nobody going to tell your sternum cracked and it ain't. You know what I'm saying? And so when it went back, it was healed. Why? Because I did what God told me to do. All things happen for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And if you put in your purpose first, God is going to take care of everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Come on, somebody. And I was in the church. I was still praising him even in the midst of the accident because I knew the devil was trying to steal my praise. Come on, somebody. And now here we are about to go to another level because we're about to do this commercial kitchen, this banquet hall, about to do all these different things. And now the devil coming for my family again. But you know what? I can't worry about it. I only can pray and give him my praise. I can't give Satan my praise. I got to let God have my praise because my hallelujah belongs to my God. My hallelujah don't belong to nobody else. It's his hallelujah that we're supposed to be saying to anyway. It's him that deserves all the praise anyway. So even though I'm going through hell, even though my family under attack, I don't care what you're going through. Whatever you're going through right now, you better learn how to praise him and give him a shout of thanksgiving because when you start shouting and giving him thanksgiving, he inhabits your praise. The devil is not after your soul if you know him. He's after your praise. He's after your faith because he already knows you're going to heaven. But it's impossible to please God without faith. He's after your faith. But the way he can get to your faith is if he steal your praise. So I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care what I'm going through. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him when I'm sick. I'm going to praise him when I'm well. I'm going to praise him when I get promoted. I'm going to praise him when I get fired. I'm going to praise him when they say good things. I'm going to praise him in a scandal. Why? Because when I praise him, he's obligated to bless me. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. He said, I'll give you 
a garment of praise for your heaviness. I don't know about you, but I'd rather put on a garment of praise than walk around with depression. I'd rather put on a garment of praise than to walk around with infirmity. I'd rather put on a garment of praise than to walk around with sadness. His hallelujah is his. His praise shall continuously be on my lips. I praise him. In fact, think about whatever you're going through. Whether it's good or bad, happy or sad, I don't care what it is. Think about it right now and just praise him for coming out of it. Or praise him. See, the devil is after your praise. He wants you to be sick because he wants your praise. But when you don't take and you don't let him steal your praise, he can't steal your health. If you don't let him steal your praise, he can't steal your peace. If you don't let him steal your praise, he can't take your marriage. Ooh. Go ahead and end it the way we ended the last time. My hallelujah belongs to you. It just happened organically at 8, but we're going to manufacture it at 11. Because his hallelujah, it belongs to him. Give him your hallelujah. Give him his hallelujah. Give him your praise. Look here. My hallelujah. Look, all things happen for your good. You. So no matter what you're going through, he allowed it. You can keep singing on Say My hallelujah. You can keep walking through. He said, Have you noticed my servant Job? He said, have you noticed my servant, Brandy? Have you noticed my servant, Derek? Have you noticed my servant, Peach? Hallelujah. Have you noticed my servant? Have you noticed them? And he lets, he lets the devil attack you because he knows you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, you wouldn't be going through it. So when you're going through hell, you should just give a shout of praise and say, my God, trust me. And there's a blessing at the other end of this challenge. I'll tell you something. For every battery, for every electrical thing, for everything that does work, there's a positive and negative charge. If you just had a positive charge in the battery in your car, it wouldn't start. You need the negative charge because the negative charge keeps the flow going between the positive and the negative. The negative stuff is going on in your life to keep you humble, to keep you on your knees, to keep you rooted. And the bigger the blessing, the more powerful the negativity that comes against you. Because the bigger the power, the more ground wire you need. I need a ground wire for my clock on my bedside. But I need a bigger ground wire for my house. So when I turn the lights on, the house won't catch on fire. But we need a bigger ground wire for this church. You need a size negative negativity in a battery in a car, but you need a bigger one for a truck. The more powerful, the greater the power of the charge, the greater the negative has to be. Some of you all are going through some stuff and the negativity is there because it's there to ground you because of the blessing that God has is so big that it needs to have a ground wire. Paul said, I knew a man, whether in body or out of body, I can't tell God know of, who had so many flipping revelations that nobody should be able to utter. He was talking about himself. But he said, there was a thorn given to me in my flesh so that I would not act like I had it all. So I wouldn't get the big head and say, I'm all in the bag of chips and the apple and the juice. And so the negativity you're going through is there because God has a blessing so big he needs to make sure he keeps you humble because he doesn't want the blessing that he gives you to destroy you. He wants your character to be ready to help to handle that blessing. Whether it be monetary, whether it be leadership, whether it be elevation, whatever it may be, he needs to have you grounded so that you can handle the blessing that he wants to give you. Don't let the devil steal your praise. Your hallelujah belongs to him. 
the hell you're going through is a prerequisite. What did he say? He said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Woo. The presence of your enemies. Lord, have mercy. Welcome your haters. Let them sit down and eat with you because he's going to bless you right in their face. I don't feel so bad about being petty. That's very petty of God. God loves you so much. He want to make your enemies watch you eat. When you go through your negativity, just praise God. Give him a sacrifice of praise and know that your blessing is around the corner. Is there one that wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You won't be able to handle some of these things that come against you unless, unless you know him. If you don't know Jesus, you may come now. If you don't know Jesus, come to get to know him. If you want to know him, so you can walk through this. Come now. Is that one? If you on, if you're online, you can inbox us. Is that one that needs a church home? You may come. If you need a church home, you may come in the name of Jesus. If you need a church home, you can also inbox us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Is there another? Is there one that says it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer? You may come. If you need prayer, you may come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anyone online? Is there anyone else in the building that needs to know Jesus? You want to forge a relationship with Jesus? Anyone? Is there another that needs Jesus? Is there another that needs a church home? Is there another that needs prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another? Hallelujah, Jesus. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another that needs Jesus? Is there another that wants to receive Jesus Christ? Is there another that needs a church home? Is there another that needs prayer? Hallelujah. Lord, I say, I surrender to you.
to you. Hallelujah. 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 You've been good. Hallelujah. You've been faithful. Hallelujah. You've been loyal. Hallelujah. You've been a keeper, Hallelujah. a man regulator, Hallelujah. a protector. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve. Yes. You deserve. Yes. You deserve. You deserve. For the rest of my life, Jesus. For the rest of my life, you deserve. Said you deserve, you deserve it. I surrender to you, oh you God. deserve it. I give you everything, you Jesus. deserve it. You deserve, you deserve it. Hallelujah! Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, camera. Thank you, everybody. But thank you, praise team, for flowing with me in the midst of the spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dre, Stephon, everybody. Hallelujah. All right, go ahead, man. Sorry. Good afternoon, New Beach Grove. We have four who's coming to join New Beach Grove. Sister Patricia Culpepper, Jessica Kuntz, Shandia Washington, Shandria, okay, I was close, wasn't it? And Dreamer Morrell. All right. They coming to join the flock of New Beach Grove. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Let me see that. And go ahead. This is book to be there for you. Amen. Amen. I think she's too tall to be your member, and I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so everybody, um, who coming for baptism? Shandria? Since Sandrea, Sandrea. Sandrea, Shadrea. Amen. Sandrea, amen. Coming for baptism. Oh, let me get all these names right. Patricia Culpepper. Jessica Coon, all right. Shadrea, that's right. Shadrea, all right. And then, is it Dreamer? You say it is Dreamer. Oh, look at you, a Dreamer, all right. Hey, I need to dream up. We need some more money to get this dag on commercial kitchen. <laughs> I'm just saying, her name Dream. I need her to dream for us. All right, we're going to lead you in what we call the sinner's prayer. We all fall short of the glory of God, and we just confess that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior because Jesus said if you confess me before men and I'll confess you before my father but if you're ashamed to confess me before men then I won't confess you before my father so in the Baptist tradition not saying it's what everybody got to do but this is what we do because we believe that if you confess before men here we know that Jesus will confess you before his father amen, amen. alright just say Lord I know I've sinned but I come to you to give you my life because I know that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, was buried for three days, and rose from the dead so that I may not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen, 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 amen. So, anyway, Deacon Brooks is a great, great deacon. He's going to be y'all deacon. And so what they're going to do is let you gather your things, and then they're going to meet you in the room across the hallway. I thank the deaconesses for y'all decorating the room. I used to be scared to take people over there. It looked like we was about to get rid of them, because sometimes they go to that room and they would disappear and not come back. I'm just playing. But seriously, though, we thank y'all for decorating the room. So they're going to take you, just get your things. You're going to go right across the hallway, and, um, 
and deacon to take y'all over there, I guess. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. We thank, we thank y'all so much. We thank y'all so much. What's up, bro? We thank y'all so much for your patience in church. We thank you so much for everything you do to bring worship and for you all participating in worship. Just remember this. Don't let the devil have your praise. Don't let anyone have your praise. Don't let anyone get you to the point where you don't praise God in any situation because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And the devil is after your praise because he's after your faith. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious majesty and do it with exceeding joy to the only wise God, I will save it to him all glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Our God, people say amen, amen, go in peace.